Businesses are firing more people over fake COVID vaccine cards as companies start enforcing mandates and requirements. Most of these workers are trying to avoid getting their coronavirus shot while maintaining their jobs. And this all comes after hockey player Evander Kane made headlines last month for appearing to submit a fake vaccination card. Although the league does not have a mandate this season, the move did violate the NHL's COVID safety protocols. He was suspended without pay for 21 games. So here to explain more about employer rights and vaccine mandates is lawyer Lindsay Ryan. Thank you so much for joining us. And it's crazy to me that people would go to, through the effort of making a fake card when getting the vaccine is so simple. But I digress. How are businesses authenticating these cards verifying indeed that their workers were inoculated. Well, thanks for having me. It's certainly an issue that employers are facing more and more now as we see vaccine mandates roll out state by state. And now we're seeing federal vaccine mandates. This is an issue that's becoming more pressing for employers. And usually what employers are doing is putting some type of process in place where whoever the individual is that is screening these vaccine cards is essentially trained to look for certain red flags when they receive an employee's vaccine card. So some of these red flags may be looking for missing information. Most vaccine cards will need to include the manufacturer and lot number, um, the date of the inoculation, um, and the vaccine provider, um, but also little clues like having misspellings on a vaccine card or if all the information on a vaccine card is printed or even uniform handwriting, because presumably you're going to have different handwriting um, associated with each of the two different shots. Also, thin cards or hand-cut cards can be an indicator that the vaccine card um, may be fraudulent. So these are signs that it, an individual working typically in HR would be looking to screen for. And if there are objective reasons to question a vaccine card, they might come back to that employee and ask more questions. You know, though, Lindsay, I just, for someone to go to the trouble of presenting a fake vaccine card, it, it strikes me as really kind of cruel and cold-hearted. You can choose not to be vaccinated, um, and it would be terrible to lose your job, but how terrible would it be if you present a fake vaccine card to your employer and you interact with someone who's immunocompromised, who is vaccinated but is still immunocompromised, um, and you make them sick and worse? I think that's the issue here. It's like, okay, you know, um, you know, I was in high school and in college. I mean, we all remember the whole fake ID thing, which, which was, you know, a thing back when I was growing up. But this is different. This is like putting other people's lives at risk just because you choose not to follow a mandate or a regulation as implemented by, by your employer. So what would happen if somebody was pre presented a fake vaccine card and then got another employee sick? Well, you make a really good point. And I, I think from the employer's perspective, that is the concern because the whole reason that employers want to implement mandatory vaccine policies, aside from complying with the vaccine mandates that are out there, is so that you can start to relax certain safety standards in the workplace, like social distancing and mask wearing. Right. And if you were doing that on the assumption that people are vaccinated, um, you do have that false sense of security if, in fact, people are presenting fake vaccination cards and coming into a work environment with relaxed safety standards it's unvaccinated. To answer your question about what the consequences might be for that employee, first, it's a violation of law. Um, at the federal level, counterfeit vaccine cards are illegal. So it's illegal to forge a vaccine card or to use a vaccine card. Now, whether the employer might report that employee is a different question. It's certainly a more aggressive mood by the employer, but certainly employers are doing that. Um, and it's important for them to know and for them to let their employees know that it would be a violation of law, um, as well as many state laws that have um, enacted laws prohibiting fraudulent vaccine cards. Um, but separate from it being illegal, uh, you know, certainly there can be consequences with respect to your employment because most companies do have some type of policy that just generally prohibits um, fraudulent behavior on the part of employees. Um, they require employees to be truthful in their communications to their employer. Um, and if you are developing a written vaccine policy, most of those policies will also explicitly say that you can uh, be subject to disciplinary action, including termination, if you submit a false vaccine card. So your job is on the line as well. 
So we've been talking about workers, but you know there are many business owners that are not, none too happy about the idea of a mandate and may not be really that enthusiastic about following a mandate. We know that the Biden administration is trying to institute one for businesses with 100 employees or more. What are the consequences for an employer who let's say, plays fast and loose with verifying their employees' immunization status, just, you know, doesn't believe in the mandate, and so kind of does perhaps a cursory check, but, you know, is really not rigid with it. Well, I think it really depends on the vaccine mandate that they're subject to. So, as you noted, we mm -hmm. do have, we did see last week, the OSHA vaccine mandate come out, which is the federal mandate for large employers. Um, and right now, over the weekend, that rule was stayed. Um, but if and when that rule comes into effect, there can be very specific penalties issued by OSHA, including penalties up to $13,000 per violation um, for employers that are not abiding by that mandate. The state mandates vary in terms of the penalties that can be imposed, and we're also seeing a wide variety in terms of enforcement action that's actually being taken. Um, but again, going back to the point of just an employer's obligation to maintain a safe and healthy workplace, if you have an outbreak in your facility um, or you are exposing employees as a result of not diligently screening vaccine cards and actually verifying vaccination status, there could be other consequences and liability that arises um, from that inaction. Um, I think, you know, probably if you have some reasonable procedure in place for screening vaccination cards, there's probably not a huge liability exposure if a vaccine card slips um, in employer's um, screening process, um, but they do need to have reasonable procedures in place. And I think it's important for employers to recognize that there are available exemptions to any vaccine mandate um, and that they are required to provide to employees. So really making sure that they're doing a good job communicating to employees that you can request exemptions for religious reasons and for medical reasons so that employees who are opposed to getting vaccinated know that those options are available to them. So, Lindsay, as I understand it, the uh, Tenth Amendment in, to the Constitution is what uh, gives state governments the primary authority to control the spread of dangerous diseases within their states. But my question is, what is the federal government's power to implement public health uh, safety measures uh, across the country um, because these challenges that are happening in court I wonder do they have legal standing or do you see would you project them being rejected because the president of the United States the executive branch does have the authority to implement uh, public health measures if they are meant to protect the American people. Well, it is a very different framework to challenge the state and local government vaccine mandates that we've seen, and certainly the vaccine mandates just from the private sector. When we're talking about the federal government, the large employer vaccine mandate that was just issued last week um, came from OSHA, and OSHA generally has authority to issue rules to address grave dangers in the workplace. Um, so the various state coalitions that we've seen challenge the vaccine mandate and you know the hours following the rules issuance have really been focusing on um, both the statutory and constitutional authority to be able to do that and whether OSHA is actually addressing a grave danger in the workplace, particularly considering that we've made it this far without that mandate in place. Um, and as we saw over the weekend, um, the challenge in the Fifth Circuit um, did get some immediate traction in that the OSHA ETS, the emergency temporary standard that is the federal vaccine mandate was stayed over the weekend and, and we'll see what type of briefing comes um, today and tomorrow on that. Could, 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 I mean, is it, um, again, we're not lawyers, so this is why we, we generally ask these questions from a position of curiosity, but um, in the same way that somebody who is uh, handicapped or disabled um, would require to be treated under certain conditions by an employer, could not a, an employee say, look, uh, I deserve to be safe, I deserve to be, um, you know, not exposed to deadly diseases, and so... You, 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 does, does, do you see where I'm going with this? Like, if if you, an employer, has to treat an employee and make ensure that they are safe and secure in their workplace, if you don't, then that feels like a violation of my civil rights. 
Well, from an employer's perspective, you're spot on in that, you know, their primary duty under OSHA is to maintain a safe and healthy workplace. And so if they implement a vaccine mandate to address that particular issue and another employee comes and says, well, I don't want to get vaccinated or I can't get vaccinated for religious or medical reasons. The first thing that employer has to do is decide, well, if I grant an exemption to this person because of their religious or medical reason, are they going to, as an unvaccinated person, pose a direct threat to my workforce? Mm. Um, and if they do, then the secondary question is, are there reasonable accommodations I can put in place to mitigate that direct threat that they might pose to the workforce. And that could include, and this is what we see most commonly, having routine COVID testing of those unvaccinated individuals and maybe having other heightened safety measures like mask requirements and social distancing or maybe rearranging of offices to make sure that that employer can feel safe having that unvaccinated person in the workplace. And it may in part depend on what the overall vaccination rate of that workplace is and exactly what kind of industry they're working in. If you have a really highly vaccinated uh, work population, maybe it's not as big of an issue to grant that exemption. If you are, if you have a workforce that is not vaccinated, um, then it becomes more concerning. And if you cannot put reasonable accommodations in place to um, still feel safe having that unvaccinated person in the workplace, there would not be an obligation for that employer to grant those reasonable accommodations, um, including if those accommodations would pose an undue hardship to the company. Fascinating discussion. Uh, Lindsay Ryan, thank you so much. This was really illuminating. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me.